Apologies to have kept you waiting, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming along to participate in the World Congress for Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration, in person or online. Now, it's time to begin the World Congress for Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration. I am Minoura Satoshi, appointed General Moderator of this World Congress from the Rehabilitation Bureau of the Ministry, Ministry of Justice of Japan. I will be facilitating of today's conference. Now, the Minister of Justice of Japan, Ms. Kamikawa Yoko, is going to deliver the welcome remarks. Minister Kamikawa, the stage is yours. Distinguished participants, good morning, good, mo good afternoon, and good evening to all of you joining from across the globe. I am Kamikawa Yoko, the Minister of Justice of Japan. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the very first World Congress for Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration on the opening day of the Kyoto Congress. This World Congress is the first international conference to bring together community volunteers and practitioners supporting offender reintegration from around the world. Before this World Congress, we hosted two Asia volunteer probation officers meetings in Tokyo in 2014 and 2017. Building on the success of these meetings, this Congress aims at bringing countries together and discussing core values of such community volunteers as well as ways to promote such systems throughout the world. Unfortunately, many offenses are committed by repeated offenders. So reducing reoffending is extremely important to realize a safe and secure, secure society. To do so, it is necessary that the community understands the efforts of repeat offenders to take on new challenges in their life. To raise awareness of the community, community volunteers' role is critical. They strive to build a rehabilitative environment in the community. In this respect, let me briefly touch upon Japanese practice. Japan's offender rehabilitation system has its origin in grassroots effort by community volunteers, which started more than 130 years ago. Ever since, it has developed with tremendous efforts of our forerunners. And now it has become an indispensable part of our criminal justice. Among community volunteers, Hogoshi carry very positive impact on offender reintegration. Hogoshi are community volunteers who help probationers reintegrate into society in collaboration with government probation officers. They stand side by side with offenders from the perspective of a good neighbor they are unpaid volunteers offering necessary support to offenders. The goal of SDGs, leave no one behind, resonates with the spirit of Hogoshi and other community volunteers. I would like to note the Kyoto Declaration adopted this morning is the first declaration that highlights multi-stakeholder partnerships in reducing reoffending. 
I hope that the Kyoto Declaration and Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration, which are to be adopted at this World Congress, will be a historic point of departure to, exp to expand the circle of community volunteers, our human resources, uh, treasures, throughout the world. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Kamikawa. Next, I'm greatly honored to introduce to you all the distinguished guest from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, Ms. Gadwali, the Executive Director of the UNODC. Ms. War is going to deliver the opening remarks. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. Minister Kamikawa, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to open this global gathering of community volunteers supporting offender reintegration. This event is a resounding endorsement of community responses as an integral part of effective global efforts against crime and an opportunity to support the essential role of individuals who are making a difference and helping societies advance the rule of law. I wish to thank Minister Kamikawa, the Ministry of Justice of Japan, and the UN Asia and Far East Institute for the Prevention of Crime and the Treatment of Offenders for taking the initiative of organizing this World Congress. Japan's long-standing and exemplary experience with its volunteer probation officer system was a founding inspiration for this World Congress and remains a model for engaging societies and individuals in crime prevention and criminal justice. I would also like to warmly greet the community volunteers who are gathered here today, as well as all of those who are participating online in this event from many countries around the world. In spite of challenges posed by the pandemic, you have all found a way to join us today, whether in person or virtually, just as you find a way to overcome obstacles and make a real and positive impact in your communities. In the era of COVID-19, we look now more than ever to those willing to contribute their time and efforts to the betterment of their communities, bringing solidarity, inspiration, and hope. The theme of this year's Crime Congress is advancing crime prevention, criminal justice, and the rule of law towards the achievement of the 2030 Agenda. The guiding light of our joint efforts towards sustainable development, the 2030 Agenda, is at its core about leaving no one behind. In line with this global commitment, your efforts to provide community-based supervision and counseling for offenders are essential to supporting the social reintegration of those who are too often rejected or marginalized. I commend you for your belief in individuals being capable of positive change and in members of the community as agents of that change. By working together, community volunteers and offenders seeking reintegration make a tangible contribution to upholding public safety and the rule of law and building resilience to the harms caused by, by crime and recidivism. They lift us closer towards peaceful and inclusive societies. Successful collaboration between criminal justice practitioners, civil society, and community volunteers proves that multi-stakeholder partnerships are a powerful tool to ensure that the roots of resilience and solidarity take hold. Their work together truly encapsulates the spirit of Goal 16 and 17 of the 2030 Agenda and provides a model for others to follow. At UNODC, we are firmly committed to placing people at the center of our responses. Our new UNODC strategy, launched this year, seeks to anchor our responses around people, including by forcing and fortifying partnerships at all levels. It also aims to empower women and youth and to harness a culture of learning and innovation. In its implementation, we would strive to support agents of change in communities, such as the community volunteers whom we celebrate today. 
UNODC also shares your belief in social reintegration of offenders. Our global program on prison challenges strives to assist countries in improving their use of non-custodial measures such as bail, probation, and parole, which can often help facilitate the social reintegration of offenders and to institutionalize a rehabilitative approach to prison management. In 2020, our efforts continued despite the challenges posed by COVID-19. In Sri Lanka, for example, UNODC trained criminal justice professionals on the use of non-custodial measures, while in Thailand and Vietnam, we helped assess the use of non-custodial measures for women offenders. UNODC has also been supporting countries in improving the employability and social reintegration of prisoners upon release. We have worked to provide vocational and practical training to prisoners in a number of countries, including Bolivia, Namibia, and the state of Palestine, with the aim of equipping them with the skills to provide for themselves and their families. In Indonesia, a new project will train female prisoners to provide them with commercially viable skills. In addition, UNODC works to reduce the offending by assisting member states to improve their compliance with the Nelson Mandela rules for the treatment of prisoners. Some 35,000 users from more than 150 countries have enrolled in our e-learning course for prison officers on the Mandela rules free of charge, and the course has been institutionalized as part of the regular national training curriculum for prison officers in various countries. Ladies and gentlemen, I understand that today's World Congress will adopt a Kyoto Declaration for Community Volunteers. I'm looking forward to that declaration, and I'm hopeful it will inform the outcome of the Kyoto Crime Congress and its legacy. I encourage all of you to take advantage of today's gathering to discuss the powerful contributions that individuals can make to their communities in preventing crime. I hope that this meeting will pave the way for a global network of community volunteers in the area of offender reintegration, a network of mutual inspiration and solidarity. UNODC believes in the difference that members of society can make against crime and recidivism. We are ready to support and raise awareness of the work of community volunteers in the reintegration of offenders. We stand together with you in extending a hand to offenders in our communities so that they may find their way back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your excellent remarks, Your Excellency. Now, the Minister of Justice, Ms. Kamikawa, and the UNODC Executive Director, Ms. Wari, are leaving due to, due to their official duties. Thank you very much for your attendance. Next, we have a video message from Mr. Tanigaki Sadakazu, President of National Federation of Volunteer Probation Officers. Mr. Tanigaki served as a member of the House of Representatives for 12 terms, during which he served as President of the Liberal Democratic Party and the Minister of Justice. Please look at the front screen. え、厚生保護法人全国保護支援名理事長の谷垣貞和でございます。世界各国から世界保護士会議にご参加されている皆様、本日は誠にありがとうございます。また、日本国内から参加されている保護士の皆さんにおかれましては、平素から厚生保護
、えー、京都の美しい春に直接触れていただけないことは大変残念でございますがコロナに負けることなくさまざまな工夫を凝らして会議が開催できましたことは世界中の保護司の仲間の絆をより一層強めるものとなることだと確信いたしております、えー、本会議の開催実現にあたりご尽力をいただいたすべての方に心から感謝と敬意を表します顧みますと今から約7年前の2014年に第1回アジア保護士会議が東京において開催され当時法務大臣を務めておりました私も出席し歓迎の挨拶をさせていただきましたアジアを中心とする各国の保護士が一堂に集まる国際会議として世界初の試みでございましたがケニアからもご参加をいただき遠くアフリカにも日本の保護士の友情が届いているなと深く感じたことを覚えております会議での議論は大変な熱気に包まれたものでありまして刑事政策において保護士が果たす役割を世界のもっと多くの人たちに知っていただきそれぞれの国で制度として導入され広がっていってほしいとこういうことを夢見まして東京宣言が高らかに読み上げられたわけでございます。その崇高な思いがまさに本日の世界保護士会議につながりましてさらに大きな広がりを持ってこれからの保護士制度について一緒に考えていける機会を得ましたことは誠に感無量でございますこれまで私は法務大臣あるいは私の属する政党の代表などそれぞれ責任のある役職を務めさせていたただきましたがその中にあっていつも人と人との絆あるいは人と地域との絆これを大切にすることを心がけて仕事をしてまいりました私自身事故によって障害を持つようになりまして改めて周囲の方々のお支えのありがたさを痛感しておりここにも一つの絆を感じております。保護士は罪を犯した人が自らの行いを反省し犯罪や非行から遠ざかり生まれ変わった姿で人生を再出発するのを辛抱強く支えていくのが仕事でございますこれは罪を犯した人との信頼関係という絆でありますまた罪を犯した人が社会復帰するには受け入れてくれる地域社会がなくてはなりませんが保護士はこの両者の間に架け橋を架け新たな絆を生み出していく役割を果たしておりますそして罪を犯した人を温かく迎え入れることができる地域社会とは人と人とが温かく支え合う絆で結ばれ誰もが再チャレンジできる応援のコミュニティでありそのために保護士は常日頃から地道な活動を続けておりますこのような活動がすべての地域の人々の安全安心を守ることにつながることを知っておられるからでありましょうしかし近年このようなコミュニティが次第にか細くなり人々にいわば分断が生まれてきているのが世界的傾向であるように思えてなりませんこのコロナ禍はその傾向に拍車をかける危険性をはらんでいるようにも感じますこういう時であるからこそ支え合う人と人との絆を丹念に練り直していくことは最も大切にすべきことでありそれぞれの国や地域においてどのような困難の状況に置かれようとも率先してそれを実践する保護士の方々は人間社会にとってエッセンシャルな存在であると言えると思います。本会議を契機に改めて犯罪や非行をした人を社会から排除するのではなく人と人との絆を大切にする社会それは SDGs が求める誰一人取り残さない社会でありますがこれを我々は本会議に集うすべての国と地域の保護士が先頭となって実現していこうではありませんか。最後になりましたが
世界保護司会議が成功を収められますことと世界各国から参加されている皆様が健康でそして安全安心な国と地域づくりに一層ご活躍されることを記念いたしまして私からのメッセージとさせていただきます。Thank you, Mr. Tanigaki. Next. <laughs> Next, Dr. Nati Chiswang, Deputy Director of the Thailand Institute of Justice, TIJ, will make a guest speech. Dr. Chiswang is advisor and acting deputy executive director of TIJ. Before assuming his role at the TIJ, he was Director General, Department of Probation and Department of Correction of the Ministry of Justice of Thailand. He will be joining us online from Bangkok, Thailand. Dr. Chiswan, the floor is yours.、Uh, Your Excellency, Ms. Kamikawa Yoko, Minister of Justice of Japan, Ms.、Uh, Gada Wari. Uh, Executive Director of the UNODC, distinguished guests and panelists, ladies and gentlemen, this is my great pleasure and honor to be invited to be a guest speaker at this World Congress、uh, for Community Volunteer、uh, in reintegration of、uh, offender today. I am especially humble in the presence of the world. Of the、uh, volunteer probation officer and those who work with volunteer o r g a n i z a t i o n from around the world today.、Uh, I、uh, would appreciate for your sacrifice of time and energy and dedication. Over the time,、uh, a volunteer link culture has become one of the main、uh, forms of progress in、uh, society. For some countries,、uh, community volunteers are the main contributor to the low crime rate in that particular country.、Uh, we have seen a good example from the host, Japan, that uh, uh, its volunteer probation system or Hokoshi system h a v e proven to be an effective and integral support system for the probation service at large. However, just like any other field of work,、uh, pro volunteer, probation, volunteer in probation and、uh, correctional service also have to keep up with the ever changing world.、Uh, the, this rad radical change, especially from the digital disruption, h a v e significantly affected the way people live and the way people、uh, perceive their life. People spend much more time on social media and are more likely to develop their belief and system and, and value based on what they have absorbed from the digital world. This also affects the tendency of the young people to chip away from the traditional value that the older generation are accompanied to, such as the family and career stability as well. And we are now seeing smaller size f a m i l y and a growth of the aging、uh, population worldwide. The rising percentage of the older generation may drive more volunteers into the system, but this also means that、uh, aging volunteers will face a challenge of adapting to the young offender who have a completely different mindset. In some countries, yes, in some countries, only a Being a senior doesn't mean that you will automatically、uh, gain、uh, respect and, and, and trust from the younger generation in today's world. From an、uh, effective probation service, volunteers will have to be trained and, and live and learn、uh, and understand the, the young people's different points of view、uh, in order to accomplish those who come into contact with the law. Supporting and providing continuous training to keep volunteer skill and、uh, devoted is a big challenge and is a condition to a successful community probation service. 
The Tokyo Lu while urging member states to encourage and support volunteer organizations that promote non cultural measures, uh, assert that state must ensure that volunteers are carefully screened according to their attitude and tolerance and properly trained for their specific responsibility. Having said that, the subject of volunteer of for probation is still not widely known and studied, especially when it comes to engaging volunteers at the community level. As we uh, have a gathering of volunteers from many places around the world today, uh, is it a wonderful opportunity for us uh, for exchange knowledge and learn from each other experience in order, in order to further improve and the community volunteer system and strengthen international cooperation. Therefore, I would like to uh, use this opportunity to offer a few uh, observations and, and uh, suggestions. Uh, first of all, uh, due to the various unexplored angles regarding the community volunteer system, should state and relevant organizations conduct more in-depth research projects on the same subject in order to exhibit the evidence-based information for future development. Uh, since a community volunteer system involves many non-state actors on the RN, it comes with operation and impact measuring complications. So in order to run a successful community probation service, state should take a viable type and test grouping to, to help keep the implementation truly effective. Second, there should be more platform for an international exchange of best practice on community volunteer system that highlight different administrative, social, and economic constraints. And could this kind of study be a useful guideline for other countries also uh, uh, who are interested in implementing the system? The Kyoto Hokochi Declaration which is going to be adopted in this Congress is a, a significant that first step for an international level co collaboration and study on this subject. With an official body for an international exchange platform country that have uh, successfully implemented volunteer provision system can uh, chair their community level crime prevention model uh, encouraging more uh, country to export and adopt the approach. And third, a positive awareness among the authority and the public are uh, equally exchange, uh, essential. It's crucial that people understand the importance of the community volunteer system and should not be regarded as a competitor of government agency. Instead, it should be deemed as a complementary that helps strengthen the government uh, duty in crime prevention. The authority should pay attention to the development and improvement of the system, especially on the training scheme, which should uh, include comprehensive work workshop, uh, action plan development, and a few study, both domestically and internationally, which will help widen the horizon of the new volunteer. My, my final observation, is that would it be uh, beneficial for volunteering community to advocate for and develop a set of international standard minimum rule for community volunteer system that considers cultural and social difference worldwide? Can this set up standard as, as a tangible milestone for the key player to accomplish? We may already have international standards that touch upon the subject of volunteer, such as uh, Tokyo Lu and the Mandela Lu. But those standards mainly provide a big framework for national scale volunteer at service. Where our community based volunteer probation system has yet to be re uh, regulated as uh, extensively and in depth. So I believe that with international standard attributes, we can raise the bar for community volunteer work around the world in a knowledge fashion and probably uh, provision and, and correctional service provide can learn how to manage 
retain, motivate, and attract more passionate volunteers and ensure that the quality of the service provide. Probation and community service only work in the community, work with them. That's why the efficiency of community volunteer supporting offender reintegration is an extremely important part of the process. Volunteer can help their community form an acceptance for offender, while helping offenders reintegrate back into the law as one of the community members. A probation system that can attract devoted and long-term volunteers who understand the real mission of the service is born to yield a certified crime prevention. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on that account, I would like to congratulate Japan for the step you are taking in pursuit uh, for the international network of community volunteers. So the Kyoto Hokkaichi Declaration, which uh, hopefully will gain unified support from the floor. I wish you uh, a successful forum and uh, even stronger cooperation among all the community volunteers in the future. So I, I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tiswang. Next, Dr. Frank Popolino will deliver a keynote speech. Dr. Popolino has a PhD in clinical psychology and has sustained a 45-year career in corrections as a frontline practitioner, senior manager, researcher, educator, trainer, and consultant. He will be joining us online from Canada. Dr. Popolino, floor is yours. Thank you, Satoshi. And I'm very pleased to be joining you from my computer screen here in Canada. And although my voice will guide you through my PowerPoint, I want to assure all of you that there's a real person behind the voice. In the short time I have, I want to develop a core argument that expanding the role of volunteers in probation practice is not just something that we should consider as meaningful and nice to do if we can, but as something that is evidence-based and important to do however we can. Now, I think we all know that historically, volunteers essentially originated the notion of community-based supervision for offenders. John Augustus recognizes the father of probation is, uh, is one example there, but there are many others. Volunteers in the last several centuries have been a driving force for reform of our institutionally developed approaches for dealing with offending. And they have stood steady in keeping that original spirit of understanding and support for offenders alive and well. But in my view, their contribution has not been recognized typically as either essential or as evidence-based. Now, in the Western world, at least in the last several decades in particular, some concerted efforts have been made to transform probation staff into agents of change. And the acronyms for some of these extensive training initiatives are well known, STICS, EPIC, STAR, and many others. And so what happens when we try to structure probation practice in that fashion? Well, we see that some staff are able to learn new skills, but others, not so much. We see level of commitment to apply the skills varies considerably. We see some change in key relational skills, but it doesn't often last. And we don't see much improvement in that all-important notion of therapeutic alliance. When facing resistance, even the best trained probation staff seem to easily revert to a surveillance control uh, philosophy. Perhaps most striking, though, is the fact that evaluation of some of these training initiatives have struggled to find any impact on reoffending. The extensive CRIMSTICS initiative in Sweden serves as a good example, where over 700 probation officers were trained system-wide using the Canadian STICS model, and where, in the end, offenders supervised by CRIMSTICS-trained probation officers 
were found to reoffend at a rate no different than those supervised by a control group of probation officers not trained in crim sticks. And of course, probation practice in the real world has to deal with many other significant issues. Mass probation with unmanageable caseloads where offenders are often simply asked to check in using a mobile app or at a kiosk. There's the new managerialism that focuses on documenting rather than relating. So can we expect mastery of an array of core correctional skills that have to be applied judiciously and consistently in probation practice? I'm going to put to you that we may be demanding too much of our probation officers in the real world context. And besides, steering offenders towards desistance requires more than a focus on personal change. A core message of the desistance paradigm is that there is more than one type of rehabilitation, as Professor Fergus McNeil has articulated so splendidly. Not just the personal, but the social, which is about acceptance, belonging, and access to new opportunities. The legal, which is about eliminating the stigmatizing and exclusionary effects of conviction. And the moral is about reparation and earning redemption as a citizen of good character. Volunteers, in my view, are better positioned to balance these various forms of rehabilitation, to serve as impartial role models, catalysts, and reinforcers for this identity change to slowly emerge and strengthen. So can volunteers do what probation practice strives to do? Of course, we know that poorly coordinated add-on volunteer schemes that are too short-term and under-resourced tend to make little difference. But the BPO model in Japan is unique. It serves as the very backbone for community corrections, capitalizing on the energy, the dedication, and the creativity of a veritable mini-army of volunteers working out of the human spirit of wanting to give back. And my exposure to BPOs in Japan over the last few years has led me to reflect on what may be the key elements for success. And I've narrowed in on six key elements which I believe make the BPO scheme evidence-based practice. And the first is time for connection. You can't help if you don't connect. And by virtue of their sheer numbers, BPOs have the benefit of dealing with only a few offenders at a time, often only one. BPOs are at a satisfied and relatively relaxed stage of their life, mostly retired, financially and emotionally stable, in relatively good health, undistracted by the usual stresses of earlier stages in life, and looking for some meaningful way to still make a difference. They have the time to listen to offenders, to get to know them before beginning to give advice or counsel. Motivational engagement can be attended to flexibly and at a time and a place convenient to the individual offender, not just in 45 minute time slots in the probation office at a given time on a given day, but in a coffee shop, a park, or even in the VPO's own home over a cup of tea. This is not forced engagement. It's naturally evoked between two people with different sets of experiences and backgrounds where each can learn from the other. Time allows trust to develop, and trust becomes the fuel that powers pro-social influence. Offenders may experience a genuine and caring other, perhaps for the first time in their lives. BPOs, in turn, receive an uplifting sense of had it, having had a positive influence on another, contributing to a zest for living that may also infect the offenders they work with. Relational style, how you relate determines how others respond, and a blending of a particular relational style emerges as key in most ethnographic studies of probation practice. Sarah Lewis, a UK researcher in her book, Therapeutic Correctional Relationships, hones in on five key dimensions, acceptance, respect, support, empathy, and belief. Offenders need to be heard 
with respectful and genuine interest. And the BPOs I met in Japan, perhaps in part because of their maturity and range of life experience, seemed to me to exude a calm and responsive relational style effortlessly and naturally, genuinely credible message givers, able to create safety and encourage self-disclosure of meaningful and sensitive information. Coaching and mentoring. Coach me to deal with the now, mentor me to imagine my future. In the business management literature, a clear distinction is made between coaching and mentoring. The coach is task or performance focused and present oriented, helps you cope with the challenges you are facing in the moment. The mentor, on the other hand, is person focused and future oriented, cares about you and your long-term development. The mentor is able to listen and understand me, build my confidence while providing advice, sharing knowledge, and gently nudging to encourage self-discovery. The coach, on the other hand, can be more directive in pointing someone to some desired end result. Now, we all know that offenders need coaching to deal with issues in the short term that can create clear and present danger, a return to substance abuse, managing their emotions, and especially their anger and depression, dealing with conflict with loved ones, boredom, the discouragement of continued unemployment. But they also require mentoring over the longer haul, since desistance is at the end of the day reinforced by the positive qualities of sustaining hope, maintaining a strong sense of self-efficacy, and redefining one's identity. The offender has to achieve at least some of their personal aspirations, both for new meaning and for gaining pro-social legitimacy, something that the good lives model clearly emphasizes. The VPOs I met were clearly attuned to this dual role of coach and mentor, able to easily oscillate from one to the other. Providing practical assistance. Give me food and shelter before you give me insight. Good probation practice requires attention to timely, concrete, and meaningful practical assistance. And BPOs are well positioned to offer this. An employment referral, a place to sleep, a warm meal, transportation, help in securing a needed document. Desistance is fueled by a sense of agency, a personally surmounting one's own obstacles or concerns, which then fuels further resolve. Probation practice tends to lead with standard solutions rather than offering contextualized and individualized options. BPOs are able to use their contacts, their connections, and their influence in the community to give the right support at the right time in the right way. VPOs as practical helpers, in my view, is perhaps one of their most important roles. Community engagers and advocates. You can't engage your community if you don't know your community. And we all accept that community involvement is essential for full reintegration. Yet communities often reject and stigmatize offenders, wishing to keep them apart rather than to see them become a part of the community. The more correctional services advocate, the more communities tend to push back. As respected community citizens and leaders with status and connectedness in their communities, VPOs can counter these sentiments and promote a joint responsibility. VPOs have entrenched themselves in Japan as local ambassadors, reaching out to the community in a myriad of ways, organizing community events, social gatherings, discussions they have with their neighbors, presentations they make to other associations, contacts they have with employers and business people, exposure they may get in the media. They have created momentum for a community responsive reintegration philosophy locally and nationally. Self-sustaining service culture. We reap what we sow. Probation services often struggle in establishing and then sustaining a culture of committed service to clients. Staff recruitment in particular is an ongoing challenge. A significant informal function of VPOs in Japan is to recruit other VPOs to remain alert in looking for, identifying, educating, informing, and encouraging others to take on the role of VPO.
The BPO system, in essence, becomes self-sustaining with one generation of BPOs recruiting and then guiding and advising the next generation in order to preserve a culture of service. And of course, BPOs remain recognized both locally and nationally as members of a quite dynamic national association of BPOs with the full support of the much fewer professional probation staff, government probation staff. The continued networking of BPOs themselves becomes the glue keeping the BPO scheme sustainable into the future. So in conclusion, can volunteers do what probation practice strives to do? In the last few years, as we've heard, the offender-focused approach that developed so naturally with the tradition of the BPO scheme has been challenged as perhaps a bit too soft. Difficulties in recruitment of new BPOs owing to the urbanization of Japanese society, the fracturing of community relations, and the growing financial hardship among the elderly are clearly issues that have to be dealt with. Japanese society is changing. It is one of the quickest aging societies in the world. And the VPO scheme will have to adapt and adjust to those changes. But in my view, the VPO model in Japan has been embedded as an innovative and evidence-based component of community corrections that should truly be applauded and emulated as much as possible everywhere. Criminal justice practice should not be seen as either soft or hard. It is either smart, evidence-informed, and community responsive or not. And I give you my thanks for um, a few minutes of my time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation, Dr. Papolino. Next, Mr. Imafuku Shoji, Director General of the Rehabilitation Bureau of the Ministry of Justice of Japan, will explain the purpose of the Kyoto Declaration on Committee Volunteers Supporting Quinder Reintegration. Please see the Kyoto Declaration distributed to you. In the panel discussion held after the break, it will be adopted based on discussions on this declaration. Now, I'd like to invite Mr. Imafuku to the podium. Good afternoon, distinguished uh, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure and honor to have this opportunity to speak in front of the distinguished international delegates attending this Congress, including our uh, online participants. Uh, today, as the organizer of this World Congress, I would like to explain the concept of the Kyoto Declaration on Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration, which we aim to adopt at the end of this Congress. First, we, I'd like to talk about the purpose of the Kyoto Declaration uh, on Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration. I will now on call it the Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration in short. In the panel discussion, we will share how the various efforts result issues that community volunteers supporting offender reintegration have developed around the world. The concerning the significance and necessity of such community volunteers to participate in efforts to prevent recidivism, I believe that it is matter, an urgent matter to disseminate this system around the world. To this end, I'm proposing to adopt the Kyoto Hogashi Declaration at the end of this, pan uh, this panel discussion. Next, I'd like to talk about the definition of community volunteers supporting offender reintegration in the Kyoto Hogashi Declaration. 
Also, we do not have a strict definition. Typical example of community volunteers include Japan's Hogoshi, a community probation volunteer in Kenya, volunteer probation assistant in the Philippines, volunteer probation officer in Thailand, and circle of support and accountability in North America and Europe. Of course, in Japan, there are community volunteers uh, such as Women's Association for Rehabilitation Aid or the BBS Association, as well as Hogoshi. Here, I'd like, I'd like to touch upon the concept that lie at the core principle of these activities. The first point is that uh, they are private citizens and organizations with the purpose of supporting offender reintegration. The activities are carried out in collaboration with the government probation officers. While the government probation officers it, are in the position to have authority as law enforcement officers, community volunteers stand side by side with offenders from the perspectives of good neighbors and nobly offer voluntary support for their reintegration. These features are proven to be very effective in motivating offenders to reintegrate into society. Second, these private citizens and organizations possess the three elements commonly cite, cited as key concepts of volunteerism, which are a free choice to undertake, positive outcome to the community, and without expectation of payment. For example, one Japanese volunteer probation officer, Hogoshi, said, quote, by continuing to work as a Hogoshi, we become a real Hogoshi, unquote. What is the driving force that keep him going? He also said, quote, I could grow as a person through services as a Hogoshi, unquote. In other words, their activities are characterized by the fact that they are motivated to make others happy as well as themselves by extending a helping hand. This is their motivation to make themselves happy by helping others. Japan's Hogoshi, as well as community volunteers around the world, have their own unique histories. I believe that they all share the, these same core values. In the panel discussion, I would like to draw your attention to how these core values are discussed by the panelists. Third, oh. Third it is also important to have the dimension of community volunteers as a principle of their core activities. The rehabilitation of offenders is not completed within the penal institution, but is achieved only when they are reintegrated in the community and lead a stable life free from recidivism. This is where the presence of community-based volunteers play an important role. Community-recommended volunteers, together with other stakeholders in the community, plays a central role in building a network of supervision and support for offenders. They are the build the relationship between the offender and the community by utilizing the various social resources, both formally and informally, in the community. In addition, the community-based volunteers support the offender to overcome many challenges faced in their path of the rehabilitation while understanding their culture, sense of life, and the value of the same community as, the near, as their neighbors in the community. The furthermore, as a representative of the community, the goal of their activities is to build a safe and a secure community that is resilient against crime and delinquency. Being a community volunteer means that they are willing to take on the very important role of building a community where people can relate to and help one another. With three 
conceptualization as a pre premise, I would now like to explain the main points of the Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration paragraph by paragraph. The Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration consists of preamble and operative paragraphs. First, a free look at the preamble paragraph. The first paragraph lists international standards and norms, including 2030 Agenda and the Doha Declaration and the Tokyo Rules. All of these point out the importance of multi-stakeholder partnership, public understanding, and public participation, and also provide important perspectives on the effective reintegration of offenders into society. For example, Article 19, Paragraph 2 of the Tokyo Rule recommends it is very important for the smooth implementation of non-custodial measures and the prevention of recidivism that community volunteers who have extensive information about the community and available resources fully demonstrate these aforementioned characteristics. Although not explicitly, explicitly stated in the draft, as mentioned in the welcome remarks by the Justice Minister, the Kyoto Declaration, uh, the Kyoto Declaration adopted this morning, is the first political declaration to focus on multi-stakeholder partnerships in the prevention of recidivism. And I'm confident that it will effectively guide the Kyoto Fogoshi Declaration into concrete practice. The second paragraph of, of this preamble a state, we should recall the Tokyo Declaration adopted at the very first Asia BPO meeting held in Tokyo in 2014. The Tokyo Declaration was adopted by Japan, Korea, and the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand, as well as observers from China and Kenya. It was groundbreaking in that it called for the establishment of an international network of volunteer probation officers, officially. The Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration is formulated based on the Tokyo Declaration. It is also systematically taking more specific and a proactive initiative to achieve the goal. The third paragraph of the preamble review the how the Hogoshi system was developed in Japan. As repeatedly mentioned in previous speeches, Japan's Hogoshi system has played an indispensable role in offender re rehabilitation in Japan. That system has enjoyed widespread public support over 130 years as one of the effective measures for offender reintegration and as one of the measures effective in creating safe and secure communities. The principles of the Hogoshi system are of universal value in criminal justice in countries around the world, overcoming the differences of their system and cultural background. The underlying concept of the Hogoshi system has universal value in criminal justice and had an impact on the development of community volunteer system in countries with different institutions and cultural background. Thus, this paragraph uh, describes such recognition. The last paragraph, the preamble, confirmed the Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration aims to develop these effective approaches based on the practice accumulated by community volunteers around the world and create an international network for, of the community, uh, volunteers. For example, as mentioned earlier, uh, community volunteers are playing an important role in countries such as Kenya, the Philippines, and Thailand. A circle of support and accountability is a group of professional volunteers who help sex offenders reintegrate into society upon their release from penal institution. And it's a common initiative in Europe and North America. This approach will be presented by panelists from respective countries in today's panel discussion. 
I will now move on to the explanation of the operative paragraph of the Kyoto Hawashi Declaration. In the first paragraph, it is clearly stated that the basic understanding that the appropriate uh, operation of the offender rehabilitation system requires support and understanding from the community. This is, as mentioned earlier, the principle that emphasizes usefulness, usefulness of community volunteers in supporting offender rehabilitation. The second paragraph points out one of the characteristics and the values of community volunteers supporting offenders from the perspective of good neighbors. They are working with offenders based on the stance of these community volunteers as the residents of the same community. They are listening attentively to how offenders see things from their own point of view, trying to open up their heart and concerns building trust and providing guidance and otherwise, sometimes warmly, sometimes strictly. By these efforts of community volunteers, the offender has an opportunity to establish offender's identity. In light of the finding of the desistance salary, which has attracted much attention in recent years in the study of offender treatment, this fact touched upon important matter for effective treatment. The third paragraph makes it clear that in order to achieve the SEDs, it is extremely important that uh, the activities of community volunteers become more active and that their approach is widely disseminated throughout the world. These community volunteers' efforts are aimed at realizing a society in which no one will be left behind, which is the basic principle of SEDs. And their efforts can be seen as one of the best practices of multi-stakeholder partnerships, which is a fundamental approach to realize an inclusive society. The importance of public participation in prevention of crime and delinquency was pointed out that as the Kyoto Congress held in 1970, at a, a half century ago, and the Japan's Hogashi system was taken up as a good practice. The Kyoto Hogashi Declaration, further emphasizing this point, is drafted with the understanding that this approach of proactively utilizing community volunteers is essential from the contemporary perspective of serious effort to achieve the SDGs. In the last two paragraphs, the Kyoto Hokushi Declaration pro proposes specific matters for of which the cooperation and the initiative of the international community and the United Nations should be continued to seek in the future. In other words, we request the United Nations Commission on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice to take some specific actions in order to promote more, active, more activities, awareness, and institutional development on community volunteerism. The first is to build an international network of community volunteers in the supervision and the integration of offenders. The second is to provide technical assistance to member states and to encourage the institutionalization of community volunteer system. The third is to formulate a United Nations model strategy for the reducing recidivism in order to tackle issue on recidivism and encourage the utilization of the community volunteers in this field. The last is to establish the International Day of Community Volunteer Supporting Offender Reintegration, Hogoshi Day. The last paragraph uh, clearly states, we will continue to follow up, follow up on this declaration to ensure that it is implemented systematically. To this end, we would like to meet regularly in the future to review its implementation and constantly encourage the development of a community volunteer system. 
Lastly, let me point out our current challenges, which are important for the further development of community volunteers. The first is that it is, it is important to build an international network of community volunteers and to promote international recognition of this network. I firmly believe that the Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration will open up the door to inclusive society where each one of us can live in peace and harmony, which is the aim of the SDGs. Secondly, we need to encourage effective community volunteer system to support offender integration around the world with appropriate technical assistance. Needless to say, such international cooperation takes the cultural background and legal system of the recipient country into account. Finally, the establishment of the International Day for Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration, Hogoshi Day, is a must for encouraging and promoting the activities of community volunteers around the world. Under the banner of this Hogoshi Day, I sincerely hope that the international solidarity and cooperation of all member states will be realized to rehabilitate offenders, prevent recidivism, and realize an inclusive society where no one is left behind. In closing, as the organizer of this World Congress, I sincerely hope that the Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration will be adopted and we will continue to work hand in hand with the people of the world so we can steadily achieve the desired result by systematically implementing specific action based on the declaration. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Imafuku. We will now take a break for one hour. We will be ventilating and disinfecting this room so you will have to wait outside. Please take all your belongings. We will reopen this room at 4.25 p.m. and resume at 4.30 p.m. During the break, you can enjoy exhibitions and performances such as Japanese calligraphy and origami in the event hall by Hagoshi, community volunteers in Japan. Please stop by. We will see you again at 4.25 p.m. Thank you.